Okay, I was trying to give people a few minutes to get on. I'm live, and it's an impromptu live, and um, I have those moments. I have those moments. Very impromptu live. In fact, I'm here with my scarf, my silk scarf on my hair. I just finished having, um, I call it um, the um, brunch and the Bible with my family. First time I've done it this way. But we sat down, we had brunch and Bible together, and I was able to teach them good word from the Lord. We had a wonderful time. And so I feel like I'm on fire. And um, so much revelation is going on in my head and in my heart right now from the Lord. And um, I will be coming to you guys um, later this week with some of those good nuggets. In fact, here's a little notepad that I have right here that I've been jotting down notes as God's has been speaking to me today and during my time of teaching and studying and brunch and Bible with my family. But there's one thing that stuck out to me that I felt I wanted to share with you right now. And it's a very quick um, little message here, a very good nugget that you can hold on to. But um, we must be careful um, to examine ourselves on a regular basis, in fact, a daily basis. We need to examine ourselves to see if we're in the faith we need to examine ourselves to make sure that we have good spiritual and moral character. We need to examine ourselves to make sure that um, our motives are pure, our intentions are pure. We should examine ourselves to make sure that our works, our deeds, everything we do is pleasing to the Lord and is bringing glory to his name. And so these are some of the things that we must be careful to examine, and I wanted to put those out there first. But... There's something else that God gave to me today as I was sitting down and he said we must also be careful to examine our prayer lives. The quality and consistency of our prayer life. Many of us are saying I'm praying, we're constantly praying, I pray all the time. I, I go into my closet and I pray and I spend countless hours praying. If we are praying as often as fervently and consistently as we say we are praying, then there should be fruit. There should be results. And what I mean by that is first with you. If you have a consistent prayer life, a persistent prayer life, the first change that people ought to see and you ought to see is a change in you. If you're praying constantly, consistently, fervently, persistently, deliberately, intentionally, if you are praying along these lines, then there should be a change in you. If you are doing all this praying and you're the same person, that's an issue because prayer changes you. Prayer changes people. You should always want prayer to start with you. The Bible says that those things done in secret they shall be revealed. And so if you're praying in secret, if you have this private prayer life and this personal prayer life, then there should be results. People should see um, the fruit of your prayer life. There should be a change in you. You should have a different attitude. You should have different conduct. You all have different actions and different ways and different ways of thinking, different ways of doing things. There should be a change in you. If you are praying as you say you are praying, prayer changes you. And if prayer has not changed your problem, it ought to be changing you and your attitude towards that problem, your actions in regards to that problem. Prayer changes you. And that's the first place and the first works and first results that you ought to see in your prayer life. Daniel had a consistent prayer life. And the Bible said he had an excellent spirit. An excellent spirit was found in Daniel. Why? Because Daniel had a prayer life. Even when they captured Daniel and they threw him into the prison, Daniel still kept his composure. He wasn't stressed. He wasn't worried. He wasn't complaining. He wasn't acting out. He still remained confident in God because he said he knew that his God was going to deliver him. Prayer kept Daniel at his post. He maintained the proper posture and position in life and in prayer and even in the lion's den because prayer changes you. 
prayer position it prepared and it had Daniel standing strong when he faced that level of adversity in his life. Prayer changes you. It changes your attitude. It changes your actions. It changes your perspective. Prayer changes you. And so if you ever want to measure the quality of your prayer life, start with yourself. Look at yourself. See how you're acting. See how you're thinking. See how you're behaving. See how you're living. And if you are praying as you ought to pray with the right intentions and the right motives, if your prayer is pure before God, if it's a righteous prayer, if you are living righteously because the prayers of the righteous God hears, it will be evidence in you and in the results that it delivers to you. Prayer always starts with you and prayer will change you. So I just want to encourage you to keep on praying. But just make sure that the quality of your prayers is sufficient. Make sure that the quality of your prayers is strong. And make sure that the quality of your prayers is in alignment and agreement with the word of God. He says, if you pray according to my will, I hear you. If you want God to hear your prayers, to receive your prayers, and to activate your prayers, make sure that your prayers are in alignment and agreement with his will and his word. God does not operate that way. He would not respond to a prayer that is otherwise. Your prayers must be, a, must be consistent. They must be in alignment and agreement with the will and the word of God. He said, if you pray according to my will, I hear you. And so I just want to say, take some time, examine your prayer life. Make sure that it's just not a vain repetition. Make sure that it's just not a casual thing. Make prayer your top priority, not your last resort. Make sure that your prayer is a priority, but make sure that the quality of your prayer is strong and that the motives of your prayers are pure motives. Make sure, examine the quality of your prayers. And when your prayers are in alignment, in agreement with the will and the word of God, you will see great changes. And not just in you, but in those things and those people and the situations that you are praying for. So I pray that you are blessed by this little nugget. I have other things to do today, but I wanted to take time. And I mean, I'm not even dressed, you know, as I've said, I had breakfast. I had brunch, actually, and Bible with my family. It was a wonderful time. It was a new initiative. I thank God for giving me the idea and giving me that degree of creativity to spend time in this word with my family, my first ministry, my first priority here on earth. So thank you for joining me. Now I must go and I guess put on some clothes, comb my hair, do something else, but I'm okay. I'm okay with the scarf. I'm okay with what I have on right now because I'm not here to be beautiful. I'm here to preach the word. So God bless you. I love you. Thank you for joining me. Make sure that the quality of your prayers is pleasing to the Lord and that they are in alignment and agreement with his word and with his will. That is pleasing to the Lord. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. And I look forward to seeing you again this week in the word and worship. God bless you.